All right, so let's uh, create a Scrug style break uh, using the melody notes for Shady Grove here. Uh, first thing I want to do is go over my setup here. Uh, the time signature is set to 2 4 time, even though you can't see it right there. Uh, and the scale is set to 30 second notes. So if I come down here and scroll over with my arrow key, you'll see that it's incrementing in 30 second notes there. All right, so in 2 4 time, if we were to do continuous rolls, we would uh, fill up the measure with eight sixteenth notes, and every half measure is a quarter note or four sixteenth notes. So here on the downbeat and the upbeat, we have eighth notes. All right, so if uh, we're going to create a scrug style break, the first thing we want to think of, a uh, rule of thumb, is that we're not trying to play every melody note. We're going to try to play about every other melody note. And uh, another rule of thumb would be if the downbeat melody note and the upbeat melody note are the same note, then we don't need to play this upbeat melody note here. Now over here you'll see that this downbeat and this upbeat note are different. And if, if in that case, we probably want to try to get that upbeat melody note. And I say probably because uh, every rule of thumb can be broken. There really are no set rules. It's your banjo, play it the way you want to. Uh, but let's go through here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just get rid of the notes that we don't need. So since those are the same, we'll get rid of that. Uh, upbeat melody note. In measure two here we have the downbeat and upbeat the same. Now this upbeat is uh, this has been split up into two sixteenth notes but since it's the same as the downbeat we'll get rid of both of them. Alright. Um, measure three again we have the same downbeat upbeat. We'll get rid of that one. And here, again, I just mentioned, uh, since these are different, downbeat and upbeat, we'll go ahead and leave those there. Measure four, we have two downbeat quarter notes. We'll just leave that alone. Measure five is the same as measure one, so we'll get rid of that one. Uh, measure six is the same as measure two. Again, we'll get rid of both of the upbeat notes here. Seventh measure, again we have the same downbeat and upbeat. Uh, here we have different downbeat upbeat, we'll leave those alone. And measure eight, we have two quarter note downbeat melody notes, we'll leave those where they are. All right, so, so the first melody note in measure one is the second string or B note and um, so when you go get, go to get a melody note uh, there's a few ways to do it of course you could just hit that melody note straight up and then keep rolling uh, or we could use a left hand technique to get that note and uh, every time I see the, the second string as the melody note I think of the slide on the third string from the second fret to the fourth fret because uh, that's the same note at the fourth fret as the open second string and, and use either an alternating thumb roll or a reverse roll with that to um, to get that measure. Uh, well the alternating thumb roll would be the first half measure, a reverse roll would cover the whole measure. But right now let's just go ahead and go with an alternating thumb roll and that's a sixteenth notes uh, two four slide now a lot of times you'll see a 2-3 slide in tablature and uh, that's fine. That is, uh, I think, more of a, depends on how you want to hear it. If you want to hear more of a chromatic kind of a sound or a slide all the way into the note, it's up to you. It's a personal uh, preference. All right. Now the second melody note is a third string or G note. And a lot of times when you see that note, you you could get that by sliding on the fourth fret, fourth string to the fifth fret, 
right? And uh, but uh, in this case, I'm thinking of since we the next note is also in the third string. I'm thinking, well, we might want to do a slide there, maybe not. But right now, let's go ahead and just set this up as a uh, just another alternating thumb roll to finish off the measure. All right, and so now we have our first measure. It sounds like this. All right, sounds good. Now it also mentions a that you could do a reverse roll with that slide, and uh, that will work. Now you notice we get that th that second middling note on the third string a little late, actually an eighth note late. But you can do that. Um, nothing wrong with that. So keep that in mind, and, and we're going to keep doing that for every measure. I'll come up with more than one way to do each measure and uh, so that's another variation to the song so by the time we're done there's multiple different variations of the song you're gonna be able to play all right uh, measure two again we're on the fourth string and again we could do a slide on the fourth string and that'd be a, a good way to do it um, but I actually I notice a, a pattern here when you go from the third string to the fourth string melody notes if you've ever played Cripple Creek, um, the way a lot of teachers teach it, you have a lick in there where you do a push off on the third string second fret and you end up on the fourth string second fret and it uh, sounds like this. Right, and that's a walk down to that fourth string which is the next note. Alright, so I like that. Let's go ahead and put that in here. And that's a two alternating thumb roll, come down hit the 4th string 2nd fret and that is going to be a 32nd push off push off, there we go alright our next belly note is the 4th string open or the D string um, now here we could certainly do another alternating thumb roll and the measure would sound like this could do that, um, but we could also do just an eighth note pinch, and uh, sometimes I just like to break it up. We don't always have to do continuous rolls through the whole thing, so I kind of like that. Uh, maybe just do an eighth note pinch here. All right. And now here again, we have the next in the third measure. The uh, next melody note is uh, the fourth string again. Um, now here we could just do an alternating thumb roll. Um, we could do another pinch, I, I assume, you know, obviously, but since we just did one, let's just do this one. Alternating thumb roll and coming up to these two notes that are different on the downbeat and upbeat. Now here, since the next melody note is the fourth string of the second fret, um, we could do a hammer on right uh, and uh, just fill in the notes in between those those two eighth notes right or we could just fret that string at the second fret or we could play those two notes as eighth notes so we get or or so that's a bunch of choices there. I think I'm just going to go with fretting it and doing an alternating thumb roll. Um, to finish off the measure. Alright. So now the fourth measure. Um, we have uh, two million notes on the second string again. And uh, here we could certainly do um, uh, the alternating thumb roll and the slide like we did in the first measure. Just do two in a row. Um, and that would sound good. Um, but since we've already done so many alternating thumb rolls already, I'm thinking to I might kind of want to mix it up a little bit. This would be a good time to do that alternating, uh, I mean, uh, reverse roll to fill up the whole measure. And we'll actually be getting that second melody note um, a sixteenth note late. I'll show you that in one second. Let's 
So you'll see right there is where the milli note actually is. But we're going to hit it right here. So again, we're hitting it a 16th note late, but that's fine. And slide. All right. So the fifth measure um, is exactly the same as the first measure. And actually, the fifth and sixth measures are the same as the first and second. And we could actually uh, do the exact same thing. We could come over here and copy this and paste it right in, and we'd almost be done with the song. Um, but I'm thinking I'd like to do a little bit more with it. Uh, and uh, there's a, a standard Scruggs lick where we do that a reverse roll, and we do a slide on the second uh, fret, third string to the third fret, and come up and fret that first string at the second fret, and come, come down and do a push off. Right, and uh, that sounds good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. So it's reverse roll, fret the first string, second fret, and now you'll see that we're actually not even going to play that melody note. But that's all right. Um, you can do that every now and then. And this is a 30-second push off, and then we also have a 30-second slide here. All right. So again, we're not hitting that that second million note, but you can do that. Um, and, uh, you don't want to do it too much, of course. I mean, we are trying to play the melody as much as we can here, but uh, this particular lick, you do that pull off or that push off there. That next note that you're looking for is that that third string, which is the next melody note, and, and it's kind of like a walk down, right? Right. So that works pretty good there. All right, the uh, sixth measure again is the same as the second. Um, and we could do the same thing except the push off since we're coming off this push off here on the in the fifth measure that would lead to this string being open so we could do the same thing but without the push off of the second measure so we can still do a walk down right coming down to that fourth string without that push off so that works and now here, um, again, we could just we could do another alternating thumb roll, or do the same thing we did in the second measure, and I like that too. So let's do another pitch. All right. So now we're to the seventh measure, uh, the D chord here, or the five chord, and a lot of songs do this where uh, at the end of a verse or chorus you'll go you'll go from the one chord to the five chord back to the one chord, and this five chord here or this D chord here is a place where you're going to hear a lot of improvisation um, uh, instead of playing the exact melody notes you'll just throw in a D lick that lasts a measure and a very common one is this double hammer on right and which leads right into that that uh, G note in the eighth measure there or another one uh, something like this uh, so there's so many, there's a lot of different licks you could throw in here and not even touch the melody notes. And again, this is where you're going to hear a lot of that. Uh, you could do a single string, right? A lick. Uh, again, there's there's a, there's a lot of them. But in this case, let's go ahead and just play it straight. And, and a lot of songs uh, will do this, right? All right? So that'll work. Let's just do an alternating thumb roll here. And uh, these two notes we could do kind of like we did in the third measure, add notes between them, something like like that. But or we could really just play them as eighth notes, like I just did a minute ago. So that sounds fine to me. And a lot of times at the end here, 
uh, you'll just do pinches. Again, we could do we could do something else like roll through this or throw a lick in, but we can just end this with pinches, no problem. All right, so now we're done with our our arrangement. Let's see what it sounds like.